went on. Back, back up, we did. I was, you know, I was uh, thinking about uh, again the Upper West Side. Um, how I met, I met people like like Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson was a good brother, man. He um, always came around 85th Street and looked out for us. You know, yo, you want, you guys are hungry, this that, and the other. And his thing was. He just wanted to hang out. Plus, I think he had a girlfriend in the building and whatnot. But he would come down, man, and yo, what's up? And watch us play stickball and whatever. Um, and then on 82nd Street, there was a, um, I was taking lessons from Sunra. I don't, um, Sunra and his orchestra. Brother was it? He was deep. He was real deep, man. You know, um, and I knew, got to meet Ronnie Boykins, uh, Marshall Allen, John Patterson became a member, you know, and then those African brother man who used to play with big drums and all that. And I was thinking about all that, man, you know, one day sitting there and um, I think I was going through a lot of stuff too, you know, because again, you know, Sandy, Sandra Lansky, man, you know, she, she really made a big impression in my life, man, because she, uh, dealing with education, and she was, you know, she knew uh, show business people, again, you know, and I was, like, really fascinated with that. Not only that, when I was a kid, I, you know, I started taking acting, you know, lessons from different uh, people. Well, not different people. My mom's taught me, uh, and Mrs. Gear from Highland State Treatment School, stuff like that. And um, and then I wanted to play the drums, cause when I was a little kid, I didn't want to play the drums. And my mom said, "I don't, I don't want no drums here. You're gonna, you're not gonna drive me nuts." You know. But years later. She allowed me to play. In fact, I have a. <laughs> I sometimes I I be tapping, you know, but um, it you know it's just deep, man. And I I, I got caught up in, I got caught up with the drug game, man, getting high and all. I really I I just I was out of focus, and then uh, two, my mom was uh. You know, she had left, moved to downtown. I was with my sister. In reality, we, we had no real, you know, solidified place to live. And, uh, I, you know, I hooked up with a friend of mine named uh, Johnny Frenchy. And I told Frenchy the situation because what happened was that we got a dispossessed. And it was all due because my mom thought she was a lawyer. Kept telling him, yo, you, you know, you can't trust people. They're going to leave you. Oh, don't worry, I got it. It's a committee, this, that, and the other. I said, okay. Well, what happened? Comes time to, to, you know, take care of business. Where's her friends? Where's the committee? You know? It's a lesson to be learned, man. Do you, do you by yourself. Don't, don't rely on nobody. Rely on you. You're the only one that's going to make this, make it happen, you know? And I'm serious. I'm very serious about that, you know? Yeah, you know, a lot of people, they pretend to be part of the nucleus. They're really not. They're just there for the ride. So I was going through me and my sister, me and my sister Julie, you know? <laughs> Little Alamo, you know? Um, you know, I, I and I, I felt so bad because, you know, we were like, I, you could say we were, we were like out there homeless, really, you know. Um, so I, I was staying with Frenchie, Johnny, and his, uh, his, his woman, Olga, you know. And they were living with a guy named Tommy who gave them a place to live, you know. And <clears throat> Johnny was, uh, he was part of the gang called the Unknowns. 
you know. But we were cool because he knew that I knew, you know, the unknown for 37th Street, Byron and, and, and Sammy and all that, you know, back in the day. So it just, everything together. So finally, um, my mom's, I don't know how it happened, how my mom's, uh, she linked up and moved into this place on 73rd Street. I uh, forgot the name of the place. But it was between uh, Columbus and Amsterdam. It was a hotel. So I started working in this place, started getting herself together, you know. And uh, she was happy that, you know, we were all together, you know. And we um, we tried our best. Meanwhile, I was with my girlfriend. My girlfriend used to come around. When my girlfriend would come around, you know, um, I don't know, I, I don't know how it happened, but one day my sister disappeared. I couldn't find her. I was nuts. I went nuts looking for her. You know, she was like probably seven, eight years old. You know, and uh, anyways. She, she showed up. I was happy about that. But going back to 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 the whole situation, you know, of uh, me with the with the weed and all that. So um, my girl tells me, oh, I don't want you. I don't want you to get it. You know, I want you to get a job. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I don't want you to mess around with the weed. And and, and I said, Yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna. But um. I was selling weed on the side, you know, and getting high on the side. One day she found out and she got pissed. That's it. I had it. I had it with you. Boom. She left. So my boy, uh, Domino's brother, Carlos' brother, his name is Eddie, Eddie Rodriguez. We started hanging out and, you know, pumping weed and stuff like that, you know, until um, I think uh, something, I, I, I can't remember what happened, but something had happened where um, we, uh, we bought some weed and it was no good. And I said, damn, I decided to do my thing. That was, you know, uh, pick, you know, pick, pick locks and all that. Boom. I was able to get uh, cameras and all that stuff, man, and sell it and buy a pound, a pound of weed and all that. And then I was doing my thing. Slowly but surely, I was, get, you know, getting my, my act together. My mom's moved to the Bronx, and when she moved to the Bronx, you know, was happy, and uh, I told her, she told me, um, we we live in the Bronx, we live over here, this, that, and the other, and I said, um, I said, okay, cool, but I really, my thing was, you know, hanging out with my people, you know, I was catting, it's called catting, you know, you, you, you sleep wherever you, 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 as a teenager, that's what we did, you know, so, um, so she moved up there, you know, to Fox Street in the Bronx. Bad neighborhood, bad neighborhood, man. When I went up there, man, I said, damn, what the, you know? I mean, seriously, there were gangs. There was a gang called the Royal Clowns that was on Simpson Street. And they would be hanging on, you know. And lucky thing that one of my boys knew one of the crowns, you know? And, uh, he introduced me, you know, yo, this is Babyface, man, from Manhattan, man. They just moved up here, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, once they see you, once they know who you are, man, they just, you know, they have a, 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 a nice, positive attitude towards you, you know? <clears throat> so, again, I was doing my thing. And then my mom's moved from Fox. She moved to Intervale. She met some guy on the job, she linked up, and they moved to 910 Intervale Avenue. 
So I went, boom, I went to visit. And um, when I went to visit, I'm waiting for, for my mom. So I think she went out or something like that, waiting for my mom. And like three or four dudes, man, pulled out guns on me, man. Where you from? I don't know. My mom's is walking up, boom. Mom's walked up, man, and she said, what's going on? And I said, I, I tried to tell her nothing's going on, go upstairs, and I didn't want her to get hurt. And these dudes are talking, you know, they were talking crap. Mom said, listen, let me tell you something. I live in this building, my son lives in this building, and you get the F out of here. Like that. And they looked at her like, yo, this woman ain't no joke. They looked at me, they gave me a look, and I said, yo, <laughs> I just moved here, man, you know? And they went like that. That was the end of that, you know? So I would, like, get off the train and pass by. Go, I would come through Kelly Street and, you know, and the, and the whole nine. And that, that was like, it wasn't, it wasn't that, I wasn't too happy, let's put it that way, living in, in, uh, in that area. And but the good thing was that my sister had a place, you know, and then uh, I started, you know, I started staying there and this and the other. And then uh, the guy that was with her, that was she was with Raymond. His name was Raymond. He didn't like the idea that I was coming home at uh, nine. Was it? He wanted me there at nine o'clock. I'm nine o'clock. You be talking to Mac Daddy here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I would pop up at like maybe 11 and one day I knocked on the door he didn't answer the door so I said you know what I'm, I'm, that's it so I went back downtown I told my boy Johnny I said yo man he said don't worry about it man there's a bed right there man you know I said alright man and you know I started I started living again in, in the west, west side of, of uh, Manhattan. And then I would go up to the Bronx and visit my moms and my sister, you know. My blood right there, you know. So then I was doing my little thing on the side, you know, like, again, selling weed. And I was getting caught up and messing around with that hell on man, you know. And um, there, were, there were times, man, that I would just nod out for days, you know. And um, it was just crazy. So I decided, you know, man, I got to, I got to, I, I kicked cold, cold turkey. That's what happened. I kicked cold turkey. And then I decided, let me just take it easy and, um, and try to, you know, do the right thing. And sure enough, when I kicked and all that and I try to do the right thing, my girlfriend pops up. Gigi pops up, and um, how she popped up was somebody had told her that I was living on 73rd Street, so she went to 84th Street looking for me, so I was living right there, and that's how that happened, so what, I was, uh, again, I was with my boy Fat Boy, I think Fat, uh, Fat Boy was the one, you know, uh, Eddie, Eddie Fat Boy, I think he was the one who told, probably told her that I was living on 73rd Street. There was a time that this girl, she kept, it's funny because this girl kept looking at me, looking at me, looking at me, man, and I'm like, and my boy Eddie said, yo, I think that girl likes you, man. I said, let me tell you something, that chick was fine. When I say fine, she was fine, you know? And uh, I walked up to her, I said, you live here? She said, yeah. I said, you keep staring at me. She says, I think you're cute. I said, really? We went upstairs, man. <laughs> I did what I had to do, man. You know what I'm saying? Three days later, I had to run to, what is it, that place? Uh, New York, uh, when you get a gunneria, the clap, whatever you want to call it, man, that girl gave me the, I couldn't believe it. And I said, that's it, man, I'm not going to, you know, the only clean girl around was my girlfriend, you know, at that time, anyway. 
So I got my shot, boom. And then I ended up going back with my girl. And we were like real cool. You know, real cool. I was checking out music as we strolled along together and all that crazy stuff. You know, we were going into some reminiscent stuff. You know. And um, <clears throat> again, I did my best to stay away from, you know, getting high. Really. And, you know, at that time I was born main band, you know. I wasn't skin popping, I wasn't snorting, I was just, you know. And um, in those days, I was thinking, man, I hope, man, that I don't have kids and they fall into that same situation, man. You know, I don't wish a habit on nobody, believe me. And, um, you know, you, you start to, you think about all kinds of crazy stuff, man, kicking a habit, too. You know? um, but, again, I, um, I thought about it with her, with, with, with my girl, and, uh, and she told me, what do you plan to do? I said, well, <clears throat> I'm going to get a job. I did. I got a job working at uh, Shraff on 23rd Street uh, in the washing dishes. <laughs> and I worked there for a, a pretty long time. I, would, I stayed clean every day. Only on weekends I would get high. You know? And on that, we'll talk.